Forty years ago, Link sent the anatomical hip stem SP2 on a journey. Reason enough for us to look back on how the success story began, which has helped so many people to a better quality of life. The story begins at the Lubinus Clinic in Kiel, Germany. If you talk about the modern history of arthroplasty, you start back in 1963, when Sir John Charnley started to perform the first arthroplasty in Great Britain, and in the same year, Buchholz started in Hamburg and Lubinus in Kiel. So, at that time, the only available implant was the Moore prosthesis, which had no inbuilt antiversion, no cup was available. That changed for the next step, the next implant, which was the Witterball. It had already the antiversion inbuilt, it was ready to be used with cups already, and uh, still with one size and one length, which then later changed with the Thompson prosthesis, which had three different sizes available. The first own development of an implant of the Lubinus Hospital started back in 74 with the Lubinus Interplanta stem, which at the time had still the diamond shape of the stem, which was common at those days. A couple of years later, the first aseptic losings occurred. And uh, it turned out that uh, one problem would be the fixation of the cement and the bone or the fixation of the implant in the cement. So they made up their mind and found different solution at that time. By the father, Hans Hermann Lubinus, and his son, Philip Lubinus, at that time, were doing some own experiments. They found out then that using uh, different designs of the stems pressed in the bone cement would deliver different results in the resistance against torsional load or direct load. And the cracks in the cement metal would occur at different pressures. So, Following these experiments, it turned out that uh, not the diamond shape, which was very commonly used at those days, uh, was the favorite one, but an overcross section, which led directly to the development of the Lubinus uh, revision stem, which had that overcross section. The next step on this um, evolution is uh, 78, the SP1, which had not only the overcross section, but had on the proximal part an S curve. In the same year, 1978, when the SP1 prosthesis was launched and was already uh, available with the over cross section and with a proximal S shape. Uh, the next evolution took place with a double S curved, which already delivered a completely anatomical S shape of the SP stem. So the um, SP2 stem has different features which are important for the long-term survival of the stem. The double S shape of the implant copies the anatomy of the femur. It allows you to achieve a circular cement mantle, which is the same design or the same size in every single height of the femur. There is this collar, which allows you to achieve a good compression of the cement and secondly, leads to a good and reproducible positioning of the stem. Secondly, this over cross section, which is superior to the well-known diamond shaped design of the older stems. It's been a long way to get here. The SP2 has been on the market since 1978 and is today available in over 74 countries. Now the journey takes us from Kiel to Sweden, where the SP2 quickly made it to the top of the world renowned Swedish hip arthroplasty registry. In Sweden, the SP2 stem is the dominant cemented stem on the market. It's been around for a very long time. Um, we have 20 years of follow-up, or more than 20 years of follow-up for the SP2 stem, and it has a 20-year survival in the Swedish arthroplasty registry of about 93%, which is an amazing number. Another thing that distinguishes the SP2 stem from other cemented stems uh, is the fact that being an anatomical stem, it has a lower risk of causing periprosthetic fractures than the wedge-shaped stems. So if you, for example, look at older patients who receive cemented stems, and especially if you look at old patients with a femoral neck fracture who receive their total hip arthroplasty because of fracture, the risk of periprosthetic fracture is 
many times higher in those patients if you use a wedge-shaped stem compared to an anatomical stem such as the SP2. It started four or five years before the surgery. I have been cycling with my friends since 2003. There's almost no river and no area in Germany and Holland where we haven't cycled yet. But in reality, my cycling was also a way to avoid walking. Eventually, at some point, it all got too bad. It started in my left leg. So in March 2016, I had my first visit with Dr. Löwe. We made all arrangements, and in April, I finally had my surgery. It all went very smoothly. After seven days, I was released and did an outpatient rehabilitation right here at the Lubinus Clinic. Since then, I have gone back to sailing along the Swedish islands. I'm doing absolutely fine. All I can say is that I can do everything the way I used to, and I'm so glad there's such a thing. Every year, another 24,000 patients join over a million who have had their mobility restored with the SP2, the outcomes of which consistently receive the highest possible rating by the UK's prestigious Orthopedic Data Evaluation Panel. The legacy of the SP2 continues into the future with a cementless version, the SPCL. We continue to give back quality of life to patients worldwide with first-class products and technologies. Link.